Yes. Dramatic times in North Africa, if I may say so, Mohammed. What is your first response to just hearing the news now that Mubarak has stepped down? Uh, history is in making, and this is a really very, very uh, emotional moment. Uh, just a few minutes we heard that one of the worst uh, oppressor and uh, tyrannic regime uh, has fallen. Uh, and um, Mubarak is living. Who, who was imagined that just a few weeks ago? It was unimaginable. Inimaginable. Would you describe this as a people's revolution? Definitely. Mm -hmm. We are seeing and witnessing one of the best moments of the Arabs on the last 200 years. This is one of the best moments, if we accept probably the Algerian revolution in 1954. Mm -hmm. We have never seen, and the Arab have never been able to uh, do such things to their to the tyranny on the last 60 years. Right. Well, if I could bring you in, Sheriff, what do you think has been the main catalyst that's giving people such courage to take control of their destiny? What do you see happening in North Africa at this point? Well, I, I think there was uh, there has been resentment uh, against the lack of democracy and human rights and development in, in the region for for a long time. But I think the the economic crises facing these countries spurred on that that resentment. I mean, people have been upset for a while, but when people are hungry. Mm. Uh, and jobless. This mm. is what gets them on the street. Right. So it's uh, although things have only started in the last month or so, I think the the resentment and anger has been long brewing, and the economy brought brought on the actual street protests. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk later on in the show about where you think this wave may lead to further on. Yeah. But just give people a background, please, Mohammed, on this state of emergency. Um, I I think you were thinking uh, before we started the show that you believe that the state of emergency actually hasn't been lifted. Not at all. It hasn't been. There is a promise that it will be in the uh, near future. We don't know what is the near future. Mm -hmm. And um, even when it will be uh, lifted, they are, um, it's if like someone is going from the, the door, coming from the window, they are going to change it to uh, by another law, which is a law against terrorism. Uh, uh, and this that means they are going to fold the emergency law in uh, a normal law making it from an exceptional law to a routine or normal law. This is even worse because this is tricky things. They will tell you that there is no emergency, but mm -hmm. in fact, it's worse than an emergency because the law and the same rules of the emergency is enfolded within this new law against terrorism. And what prompted the, the, uh, the instituting of the state of emergency? Not everyone <clears throat> is aware of the history of Algeria. I will try to make it very simple to Please. your viewers because I know that most of them, they haven't probably accessed information about Algeria in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. On uh, exactly 19 years ago, the Algerian people um, chose um, for the first time in, in, uh, in 30 years after the independence and chose um, three parties to run the country in parliamentary election. And the main uh, party who won the election was an Islamist party. Uh, the generals of the army decided that this is wrong and the Algerian has done a big mistake, the Algerian people has done a big mistake and a handful of them decided to topple the president, to uh, cancel the election, to suspend the constitution and to uh, impose an emergency law. This is okay. even before the events mm -hmm, start. Mm -hmm. It was imposed exactly 19 years ago on the 9th of February 1992, 19 years ago and uh, since, since it has been imposed. And since it has been impo imposed, it was absolutely a matter of abuse because everything that m means it was in the hand of the army, they do what they want, they suspend who they want, and uh, the, um, the judge under their rule, diplomacy under their rule, military minister under their rule, everything was under the uh, power of the generals. They got very, very, very huge power, all the power in one hand or in few, um, uh, in the hand of few generals. These so, generals un so unlike Mubarak, are you saying that Bouteflika is not so much like the head of this dictatorship, but the army has more he's control? Not. He's not. He's the representative, if you want, or uh, the facade of the regime, because mm -hmm. the regime needs, and under the uh, advice of the West, they ask their friends the generals to have a military uh, a civilian 
facade civilian faces to be able to deal with them. If not, it will be very difficult to sell this to their people, to the Western uh, countries. Therefore, uh, they have decided to bring Bouteflika to the president. Although he came from 1962, he, on 1962 he was a minister. Imagine that on mm. 1962, before Obama was born, mm. Bouteflika was in power. And imagine how many uh, American presidents passed, how many uh, British, and so. Yeah. Uh, he was, and he's still in 15 ye 50 years in power, but yeah. he's a facade power, yeah. the real power. The heart of the power is in the hand of the DRS, which is the secret services and uh, the chief okay. of staff.